give it just a moment for everyone to come in from the waiting room. As a reminder, if you were not testifying before the board, please mute yourself. Good morning, this is a hearing before the licensing board for the city of Boston. Today is Tuesday, July 27th. Today's hearing is being conducted pursuant to certain temporary amendments to the open meeting law, which is what allows us to meet virtually. This hearing will be recorded and will be posted to the city's website. Before I review procedural matters, I will introduce Chairwoman Kathleen Joyce. Good morning, my name is Kathleen Joyce. I'm chair of the Boston Licensing Board and today I'm joined by Commissioner Liam Curran and Commissioner Kiana Saxon. Please ensure that your video and audio is functioning as you will need to be sworn in prior to testifying. Each item will be taken in the order it appears on the agenda. I will ask who is present on behalf of the licensee, who is present on behalf of the Boston Police Department, and whether there are any other individuals with personal knowledge of the alleged incident. I will then swear in all parties. After that, the police report will be read into the record. The licensee or its representative will have the opportunity to make a brief statement, followed by questions by the chairwoman and the commissioner. Again, all testimony will be limited to that of individuals with personal knowledge of the alleged incident. Items one and two have been continued pursuant to a request by the licensee as the licensee was unable to obtain legal counsel. This will be continued to August, I'm sorry, August 3rd, a week from today, and a subsequent continuance will not be granted if requested. Calling Guzman LLC, doing business as Medalla, located at 411 Chelsea Street. The date of the incident is May 23rd, 2021. Over occupancy and violation of Mass General Law, Chapter 138, Section 64, and Board's Rules 1.03J, 1.06A, and F. Who is present on behalf of the licensee? Good morning. My name is uh, Luis Maldonado. I'm the, I'm the owner on uh, Guzman LLC, LLC. Thank you, Luis. Who is present on behalf of the Boston Police Department who will be testifying? Sergeant James DeFeo. Thank you, Sergeant. And are there any other individuals with personal knowledge of the alleged incident who wish to testify? Seeing none, could you all please raise your right hand? Please raise your right hand. Do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. Thank you, Sergeant. Please proceed with the police report. About one eight, about one eighteen in the morning on Sunday, May twenty third, twenty twenty one, Officer Kennedy assigned to the Gold Four Fifteen received a radio call for people gathering in front of Four Eleven Chelsea Street, East Boston, the Taverna Modelo. The caller also stated that the music coming from the establishment was very loud. Sergeant DeFeo, Gold 918, responded to assist the Gold 415 Officer Kennedy. Sergeant DeFeo arrived at Taverno Modelo within several minutes of the initial radio broadcast. Sergeant DeFeo parked his mock department cruiser on Chelsea Street, approximately 100 feet from the entrance of the Taverno Modelo. Prior to getting out of the cruiser, Sergeant DeFeo observed approximately seven to eight people standing in front of Taverno. Taverna Modelo, smoking and talking. While seated in the cruiser, Sergeant DeFeo could hear the music coming from the ter Taverna Modelo. Sergeant DeFeo identified himself to the doorman upon entering the Taverna Modelo, but due to very loud music and crowding, it took several minutes to alert the manager on duty, Mr. Lu Luis Maldonado. Eventually identified himself as the owner and manager on duty, Mr. Maldonado was instructed to have the live DJ turn the music down so it no longer emitted from the building. Sergeant DeFeo then proceeded to count people present. Sergeant DeFeo counted approximately 100 patrons on site inside the building, to not to include six waitresses, a bartender, a doorman, and the manager himself, for a total of approximately 108 people. Continuing the Code 35 inspection, Sergeant DeFeo found that the total pre convicted correction, pre-COVID restrictions had an occupancy of 91 persons. Given the total number of persons in the COVID restrictions, it was determined that the Taverna Modelo was a violation of its occupancy limits. It was also determined that given the fact that live DJ music could be heard through the walls and a closed door 100 feet from the entrance, the music was in excess, was 
in excess and not reasonable. No other violations were noted. All permits were in order, up to date, and predominantly displayed behind the service car. Mr. Maldonado was fully cooperative and stated he would better monitor activities in the future. Thank you. Mr. Maldonado, would you like to address the alleged incident? All right. All right. That day, um, that's the last week on the pandemic. I was, I was uh, stressed. I, that day I was working with my security really, really serious. I locked the door before get the people in and my security, he didn't do his job. It's really bad that day. That's the second week on the, the, the second week in the pandemic. Um, and then I was, I was there. I know everything what I, the police just say. I, I go with him, I fall in him. And then I, I told him, I'm sorry, but the people's really stress outside. The people's really, really push the door and then really, really in serious um, bad situ bad move. And then um, the police, the, the, sorry, the security, he let them in a lot of people. And then I give it to him, that calm person, the he lying to me. He lied to me, and then I, I don't count. That's my mistake. I don't count myself or people. And um, what I'm doing right now, I'm working on and doing better job and count myself. I don't trust my my security at all. I always keep the eyes on it, and I I let that go. That security, he just worked three days for me. I let that go because he don't do his job. I fire him. Thank I you. put better, better people to 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 do my door and Thank my business. And my person always keep it extra eyes on it. Thank you, sir. Chairwoman Joyce. Thank you, um, and thank you um, for joining us today. So, is it your testimony that he had only been working for three days and then you fired him? Yes, because yes, because he don't he don't. See, when I locked the door, I said, I said to him, don't let them in, no more people, because we, we're done. And then he don't listen to me. He keep, he, he keep let them in people. And then I tell him, why you do that? You know, that's my business. It's all in me. Something happens. I know you're my door person. You might, you, you decide if the people, the, you don't want to let them in, you know, let them in. I handle the inside door is all yours, but something happens. I always behind you. I always keep the extra eye on anybody who's who's already drunk. I'm not going to let the man who's who's you know who's in a who's coming late or he's coming with different people already drunk. I don't care how many people it is. I'm not going to let them in because one of those people's already drunk. Things like that. I always I say to my security, keep your eyes who, who who's okay, um, Sergeant. You testified, and in the incident report, you said. Um, um, staff was fully cooperative? Yes, ma'am, they were. Okay. Okay, I don't have any other questions. Um, Commissioner Curran or Commissioner Saxon, do you? No questions, thank you. Not for me, thank you. Thank you very much. The board will take this matter under advisement. Calling Galway Inc. doing business as the Harp, located at 85 Causeway Street. The date of the incident is May 30th, 2021. Assault battery with a deadly weapon, patron on patron, in violation of Mass General Law, Chapter 138, Section 64, Chapter 265, Section 15A. Who is present on behalf of the licensee? Good morning, uh, Secretary Delaney Hawkins, Dennis Quilty, attorney representing the licensee. With me is Jamie Roberts of the uh, ownership group. Good morning. Thank you. Let me just make sure I can see Mr. Roberts. Okay, I can see you, thank you. And who will be testifying on behalf of the Boston Police Department? Sergeant Jeff King. Thank you, Sergeant King. Are there any other individuals with personal knowledge of the alleged incident who wish to testify? Seeing none, could you please raise your right hand? Do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth? Thank you. Uh, Sergeant, you may proceed with the police report. Okay. About 1.44 a.m. on Sunday, 5.30.21, Officer Jones and Lynch in the Alpha 112 Alpha unit responded to radio call for a person bleeding from the face at 175 Portland Street. 
Upon arrival, officers observed a male identified as Maxwell Miller, date of birth 31099, lying on the sidewalk of the street, bleeding from the face mouth area. Officers requested Boston EMS. Miller was alert and coherent and was able to answer officers' questions. Miller stated he was punched in the face by an unknown male. Officers spoke to a second victim on scene identified as Kevin Tina, T-E-N-A, date of birth 72399, who stated that he and his friends were in the Harp Bar when uh, some guys started trouble with them inside. Tina stated that when the bar let out, he was standing on the sidewalk at the above location when an unknown male hit him in the head with a bottle and fled. Ambulance P01 transported both victims to MGH for further evaluation. Officers observed the Harp Bar outside seating area was not secure or being secured after the bar was let out, which caused and allowed people to sit around causing disturbance. That was the officer's report. Then I had a, I filed a supplemental report the next day, uh, about 2.40 p.m. on Monday, May 31st, 2021, Sergeant King, the Alpha 915 unit, performed a Code 35 inspection at the Harp 85 Causeway Street, Boston. Relative to the original incident, Sergeant King issued license premise inspection notice number 044534 to HARP manager Austin F. O'Connor for ABDW patron on patron license premise violation. Sergeant King also issued a warning to the staff relative to sidewalk obstruction that Sergeant King observed on the night of Saturday, 529-21 to Sunday, 530-21. Thank you. Attorney Quilty, would you like to address the alleged incident? Yes, ma'am. If I might just ask a couple of questions of the sergeant first. Of course. Thank you very much. Uh, good morning, sergeant. Good morning. Uh, looking at your uh, inspection notice, you indicated that the management cooperated with you. Uh, is that correct? That is correct. And just with regard to the um, incident itself, it appears that the location was on Portland Street. And I believe that location is another licensed premise. Is that not correct? Um, my recollection was that it happened right around the corner from the harp. But this uh, address, 175 Portland, I believe is the address of a place called Porter's, which is uh, another another bar it, and restaurant on Portland Street. It may be, yes. Okay. And the, the two individuals who you spoke to at that scene, both... Uh, um, told you that it was an unknown male that struck them? They did not know the name of the person, but they recognized the person as someone that they had been interacting with inside the heart. Um, that, that, that doesn't appear anywhere in this report, though. That does not, but I didn't write the police, the original police report. I read that that is my recollection of the incident. So they did, they told you they recognized these people from the heart? Yes, sir. Okay. And um, the did, and then you went back to the harp location or you went the next day, is that correct? Uh, I went back to issue the license premise violation the next day. I also spoke with the uh, harp staff that evening. Okay. And when you spoke to them, that was that about the uh, outside um, patio area furniture and the like? Uh, that night, I did say to them that um, they needed to do a better job um, keeping the sidewalk clear. Uh, the uh, manager informed me that he had had issues um, getting adequate security staff because it was like, I believe it was the first weekend that everything opened up after the COVID restrictions were lifted. That's, that was what that, my information as well. I'm sure Mr. Roberts can verify that. But have you been back since? He tells me that they've secured everything now so that it you know, people cannot uh, gather around the furniture when it's roped up for the night. I personally have not been back since, no. Thank you, sir. Uh, I have no further questions. Mr. May I ask Mr. Roberts a question? Of course. Ask him to uh, relate his uh, information. Yeah, I guess I can. Jamie, did you, can you unmute yourself? Okay, sorry about that. Just identify yourself. You've been sworn. Just identify yourself, please, for the record. General Manager of the Harp. Your name is James Roberts. That's correct. That broke up. Okay. And are you familiar with the uh, incident uh, that's just been referenced by Sergeant King? Yes, I am. 
Okay, can you uh, explain to the board your uh, belief as to what occurred that night? Uh, it was obviously at the end of the night. Uh, can you hear me okay? I just want to make sure. You're, you're breaking up pretty badly. You're okay. traveling a little bit on your audio. All right. I'll try to speak slowly, and hopefully it won't break up as much. Is that a little better? Yes. Okay. So this happened on uh, the evening of May 29th, uh, the morning of Sunday, May 30th. It was at the end of the night as we were closing up. We were not aware of an incident inside the harp, an altercation between any two individuals. Uh, as we dispersed uh, the people for the evening, uh, this apparently occurred uh, down at 175 Portland Street, which is roughly you know 150 feet away from our front door. Um, we did not see the incident. We, we, we do have security outside, but we did not go that far down Portland Street uh, when the incident happens. And as far as the patio goes, we had it chained up, but it was uh, not chained up uh, securely enough that people could still pull out uh, the chairs from the, uh, the, the wire that ties them up. Uh, we have since stacked the chairs, put them in a, in a tight corner, and now have them chained up uh, much more uh, properly. Thank you, sir. So is it your testimony that you weren't aware of this incident until the uh, police arrived the following morning? We, we saw that there was an altercation. No, we were aware that night as the police told us, but we did not have security that far down Portland Street. Thank you, sir. The uh, board may have some questions. I do have some questions. What time do you lock up those tables and chairs? Uh, that evening, right when we start uh, the, the line, so 9 p.m. Okay. And so, did you review the video footage of inside your bar from that night? There is nothing we can see. And no, we did not know where or, or what we were looking for. So it was hard to uh, to locate anything, any sort of altercation. There was no, from what we were aware, nobody on staff, bar staff saw any pushing. So if it was an altercation, I believe it was a verbal altercation that we were not aware of. And, and what's your estimation about how far down the street this altercation occurred from your license premise? Roughly 175 feet from our front door. Okay. I don't have any other questions. Commissioner Saxon or Commissioner Curran? I don't. Thank you. Nothing further from me. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. The board will take this matter under advisement. Thank you. Calling Concord Entertainment Inc. doing business as Bill's Bar, the Lansdowne Pub, located at 9 Lansdowne Street. The date of the incident was May 30th, 2021. Patron on staff assault and violation of Mass General Law, Chapter 138, Section 64, Chapter 265, Section 13A. Who is present on behalf of the licensee? Good morning, uh, Secretary Delaney Hawkins. Dennis Quilty again representing the applicant. Um, with me this morning is uh, Matt Casey of the uh, licensed establishment. Good morning. Good morning. Let me just, sure. Uh, Mr. Casey, could you please turn on your video? Yeah, thank you. Thank you. And who on behalf of the Boston Police Department will be testifying? Good morning, uh, Sergeant Matthew Hogart for the Boston Police. I'm actually filling in for Sergeant Aaron Schroeder who was summoned for this hearing, but uh, she had a family emergency and couldn't attend this morning. Thank you very much, Sergeant. Are there any other individuals who wish who have personal knowledge of the alleged incident who wish to testify? Seeing no one, please raise your right hand. I may you... Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, I'm sorry, Lieutenant Detective Troy. If there's uh, there's a uh, an officer May on the uh, on the call also, and she uh, reading from the incident report, she was present at the uh, at the call. Oh, thank you, Officer May. If you could also please raise your right hand. Do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. do. Thank you. Uh, Sergeant, please proceed with the police report. About 2.12 a.m. on Sunday, May 30th, 2021, Officers Gronkowski and May in the Delta 103 responded to a radio call for a fight at 9 Lansdowne Street. The following units also assisted on scene, the Delta K-1, the Delta 201, and the Delta 101. Upon arrival, officers spoke with the victim, Nathaniel Gadd, and the other victim, Jason Vale, who work at Lansdowne Pub. Mr. Gadd stated that he was punched multiple times by the suspect, Michael Maher, who was ordered to leave the Lansdowne Pub. Mr. Vale stated that the suspect bit him on his right hand 
as he and Mr. Gad, I'm sorry, as he was helping Mr. Gad. Officers asked the victims if they needed medical attention to which they denied. The suspect, Mr. Maher, was brought to the Boston Medical Center for further evaluation. The suspect was charged with two counts of assault and battery and Sergeant Schroeder responded to the scene and conducted a license premise violation for patron on staff assault. Officer May, did you have anything you wanted to add? No. Thank you. Attorney Quilty? <clears throat> yes, ma'am. Um, Sergeant, you, you have no personal knowledge Officer May does though, is that correct? Uh, that is correct. And just uh, Officer May reading from the uh, inspection notice that was um, handed out to them, uh, were the police called yes, by whom staff members, uh, did owner management cooperate with police? Yes, it appears as though the staff were the ones that were the victims here and they indeed called called you and informed you of what, the police department informed you of what was going on. And I presume then stood by and cooperated with you. Yes. Okay. Uh, thank you, ma'am. I have no further questions. Um, Mr. Casey. Uh, you you wrote up a report. This individual was being removed. Is that correct? Uh, he was being walked out the front door. That's correct. Then he, he just attacked the staff members. Uh, he turned around and elbowed one of the staff members. He was then restrained for a few moments. Uh, they thought he was he caught his breath. They let him go and he began to punch one of the security members. That's uh, Nathaniel. Um, and then uh, they restrained him again until police arrived. And your staff called the police? Correct. Thank you, sir. The board may have some questions for you. Thank you. Chairwoman Joyce? Uh, what was the date of this again? May 30th is the write-up. I don't know whether it was the 29th, perhaps evening. Um, okay. Can you tell me a little bit more about what was going on that night? What was the crowd like? Um, it was uh, it was the first weekend, obviously that we were open. Um, it was busy, uh, but we were we had a uh, we had the right amount of staff, the right amount of security. The crowd was lively. Okay, how many staff did you have on? Uh, in the whole building, or just security? Security. I believe security that night was six. Okay. Did, was there anything leading up to this incident? I mean, you said he was being walked out. Was he? Was there a fight going on inside? Uh, I believe he was uh, having words with another patron, and he was intoxicated. Okay. I don't have any further questions, Commissioner Saxon or Commissioner Curran. Thanks. Nothing further for me. Thank. Thank you. The board will take this matter under advisement. Calling Concord Entertainment, Inc., doing business as Bill's Bar, the Lansdowne Pub, located at 9 Lansdowne Street. The date of the incident was June 4th, 2021, over-serving patron in violation of Mass General Law, Chapter 138, Section 64. Who is present on behalf of the licensee? Good morning again, uh, Secretary Delaney Hawkins, Dennis Quilty, attorney representing the licensee and Matt Casey uh, representing uh, the licensee as well. Good morning. Thank you. And who will be testifying on behalf of the Boston Police Department? Good morning again, Sergeant Hogart. Uh, again, filling in for Sergeant Schroeder who could not be here this morning. And are there any other individuals with knowledge of the alleged in incident who wish to testify? Officer May, I'm here as well. Thank you, officer. And all parties have been sworn in. Please proceed with the police report. Approximately 1.28 a.m. on Friday, June 4th, 2021, officers May and Piguero and the Delta K-1 responded to a radio call for an EMS investigation at Nine Lands Down Street. Upon arrival, officers were met by Antonio Antoni Blasco Cortez, who was attempting to lift up his friend, identified as the victim, Mirko Viola, who officers observed to be extremely intoxicated, laying on the sidewalk and actively vomiting on himself. Officers requested EMS to their location and Boston EMS Ambulance 14 arrived on scene to evaluate the victim, Viola. Officers attempted to speak to Blasco Cortez in order to determine what had happened. It should be noted that Blasco Cortez was intoxicated himself and at times was unable to answer officers' questions or follow a line of conversation. 
Glasgow Cortez stated that they had been to multiple bars prior to ending their night at the Lansdowne pub. District 4 Patrol Supervisor Sergeant Schroeder was notified and responded to the scene and conducted a Code 35 license premise investigation. License premise, invest, license premise violation 023277 was issued to Bill's Bar for over serving. The victim, Bola, was transported to Ambulance 14 Beth Israel Hospital for further treatment. Thank you, sir. I'm sorry, I believe I said Bill's Bar there. I meant to say Lansdowne Pub. That was my mistake. Thank you. Officer May, did you have anything to add? No. Thank you. Attorney Quilty? Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you, ma'am. Um, Sergeant, again, in this matter, you're reading the report of the officer who was unavailable today? That is correct. And you have no personal knowledge? No, and, I do not. And again, it's Officer May that does. She was there present that night. Is that right, officer? Yes, I'm the one that wrote the report. Thank you, ma'am. And your, uh, your uh, inspection notice indicates that the management cooperated with the police? Yes. Okay. And this was, you discovered these people outside on the street, is that correct? Yes. And so you, did you observe anyone from the Lansdowne pub serve these people? No. And is the only connection that they gave you to the Lansdowne pub, the fact that they said they had been to multiple bars prior to ending their night at the Lansdowne pub? Yes, and the fact that they were directly outside the side door. Did you, so you, you, you spoke to the staff, I presume? That night, I uh, don't believe so. No, it was pretty busy. Um, so you don't, you wouldn't have known what time they closed for the evening that night, what time they were? I don't know. When you were there interviewing these people, did you notice that the doors were closed and there were no patrons? They were closing at the time, but there was definitely still patrons in the street and on the sidewalk. But were there patrons, there were no patrons inside? I did not go inside. Thank you, ma'am. Um, no further questions. I would may I ask Mr. Casey a few questions. Yes, please proceed. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Casey, you were uh, familiar with these circumstances? Uh, I am, I was not present, but I am familiar with the circumstances. Are you the general, the, the manager overseeing this establishment? Yes, sir. Okay. Um, can you just explain to the board, this was a Thursday evening, uh, what your closing policy was for Thursdays and particularly this Thursday? So Thursdays, uh, we close, we give last call at 1230. We uh, try to have everybody off the premises by one o'clock. Um, that is the usual standard procedures on a Thursday for us at the pub. And was that the case that night? Uh, according to my manager and my uh, security staff, that was the case that night. So that would, would it be your testimony that if the police arrived at 128 AM, the establishment had been closed for an hour? Uh, we would have stopped serving for approximately an hour and our we would have everybody off the premises or try to have everybody off the premises um, by one o'clock. And <clears throat> did, did, did staff indicate whether or not they knew that these two individuals were actually inside the pub and had been served? Uh, they did not know. And the violation I presume was given to you the next day uh, given to my assistant general manager Wayne Angioni the next day so is, would it be fair to say that that's the, the only time in which you or the staff knew that this had occurred that's when we first knew it occurred correct thank you sir I have no further questions the board may have some questions for you your woman Joyce so was your testimony, Attorney Quilty or Mr. Casey, that um, these victims were not inside the Lansdowne pub at any time that night? We don't I know the answer. To we that. don't know. We don't know the answer. The only indication given was what they said outside. And, you know, patrons had been uh, removed from the premises at, at, by one o'clock. And we have no idea. So they could have been at every place on the street for all we know. And they said they had been at other places. We don't know. We just don't know whether they just ended up there 
you know, on their way trying to get out of the area. We have no idea. Okay, because the, the police report says that they ended their night at the Lansdowne pub. Oh, um, yeah. So you, you don't know how long they were inside the Lansdowne pub? But, but no, we, we don't know whether they were. I mean, you're talking about two individuals who are described as extremely intoxicated, and the only indication where they were was what they said to the police officer. That's, I they, guess what they, I'm asking is, have you reviewed any of your video footage, any of your receipts from the night? Do you have anything so we, that says that these uh, people were inside your pub? Uh, we we don't have any video that's that's for the outside where they were, so we don't know what the individuals look like at all. Uh, okay. I have not reviewed receipts. Okay. Okay, I don't have any other questions. Commissioner Karn or Commissioner Saxon? Could you just reiterate the date of this incident and also the last one? Sorry, would you, I didn't hear the question. Could you just reiterate the date of this incident and then the date of the last incident, the last matter? This incident is June 4th. And the previous incident was May 30th. Thank you. Nothing for me. Thank you. Thank you. The board will take this matter under advisement. Thank you. Calling Inshallah Inc. doing business as Crave, located at 128 Brighton Avenue. The date of the incident was June 6, 2021. Assault employee on patron spit in violation of Mass General Law, Chapter 138, Section 64, Chapter 265, Section 13A. Who is present on behalf of the licensee? Hello, my name is Salma um, Ilorch, and I uh, was one of the managers on duty that night. Thank you, ma'am. Could you uh, state your last name for me again? Ilorch, E L O R C H. Excuse me. Who is present on? Uh, um, sorry, who's present on behalf of the Boston Police Department? Sergeant Robert Boyle. Thank you, Sergeant. And are there any other individuals with personal knowledge of the alleged incident who wish to testify regarding this matter? Just me. Right, could you please raise your right hand? Do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the I truth? I do. I swear. Sergeant Boyle, you as well? I do. Thank you. Uh, Sergeant, please proceed with the police report. On uh, June 6th at about 11.22 a.m., I, uh, Officers Diageo and, it's, I'm sorry, 11.22 p.m., Officers Diageo and Darling signed to the Kilo 102, responded to an investigation at 128 Bright Nav, Crave Restaurant, Bar and Lounge. Officers uh, spoke with a victim, later identified as Hans Pierre, who stated that he went into the restaurant to inquire about getting food, and the people working there at the restaurant were giving him a hard time. The victim stated he was asked to leave but continue, and continued to do so. The victim stated that while he was outside the establishment, one of the bouncers confronted him in an aggressive manner. The victim stated that the subject lowered his mask and got in a verbal altercation with the suspect. The victim stated that while he was speaking with the victim, the suspect got saliva on him. Uh, there was no physical altercation, just uh, saliva. And he stated that they did not serve him the food. Based on that, I responded uh, the next day and issued a license premise violation 024651 for employee on patron uh, assault to which spit. That's it. So thank you very much, Sergeant. Uh, Ms. Ulorik, do you want to uh, provide a brief statement regarding the alleged incident? Um, sure. I can tell you, um, so from my side, um, what I what I recall, the, the um, Sean, the bouncer, is not, is not here. He is no longer employed with us. Um, but I, from my recollection, the police came in once, and um, I talked to them, and they didn't even want to write a report. And then the next day, I believe it was the officer Boyle who came in and wrote a report, um, but we never, the, our employee never gave his side either. I did that night call this patron, um, called him, I had a really long conversation with him and the, the, the spit, the saliva matter was never brought up um, from what I gathered. 
they had a little verbal altercation to which um, Hans Pierce kept calling um, Sean's son and it frustrated him and because of the music etc he removed Sean removed his mask to like talk to him or something but I don't recall any um, anything about saliva and um, I spoke to Hans after I invited him to come in the next day but he never showed it back up okay thank you chairwoman Joyce I don't have any questions. Commissioners? No, thank you. No. If I could add, if I could just add, uh, when I went in the next day, they were the establishment and their employees were completely cooperative. Um, I spoke with the woman that's here today. She said the exact same thing to me that she just said today, and uh, they were extremely cooperative, 100%. And, you know, they were very uh, sad about what happened. So, you know, good. they're a good organization and they run a great place up there. Thank you. Thank you very much, Sergeant. The board will take this under advisement. Thank you. May I leave? Yes. Okay. Thank you. Calling it Chelsea City Square Corp doing business as Blackmore Bar and Kitchen located at 1 Chelsea Street. The date of the incident was May 31st, 2021. Assault and battery with a deadly weapon, patron on patron, outside of premise in violation of Mass General Law, Chapter 138, Section 64, Chapter 265, Section 15A. Person under 21 drinking alcohol on premise in violation of Mass General Law, Chapter 138, Sections 34A, 34C, and 64 to 64A. Failure to call 911 in violation of Mass General Law, Chapter 138, Section 64, in Boards Rule 1.14B. Who is present on behalf of the licensee? Yes, good morning. Attorney Carolyn Conway, 350 West Broadway, on behalf of the licensee. And I have with me today Mr. Paul Nahijian, who was uh, management on duty that night. Great, thank you. And who uh, is present on behalf of the uh, Boston Police Department? I am. Detective Fernandez. Are there any individuals with personal knowledge of the alleged incident who wish to testify regarding okay. the matter? Seeing none, please raise your right hands. Do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. I do. And we've also, for the record, also sworn in uh, Sergeant Detective Gallagher. Please proceed with the police report. Sergeant Gallagher, are you going to read this or should I read it? Sergeant, you are on mute. Sorry about that. I, I can read Craig Jones' narrative if you want to read the second one. Okay. On Sunday, May 31st at 2021 at approximately 12.45 a.m., Officer Craig Jones assigned to the Alpha 411 along with the Alpha 908 Sergeant St. Peter responded to the Boston Medical Center for a victim of a stabbing. On arrival, officers spoke to the victim identified as Jace Emma, date of birth 12-2021, I'm sorry, 2001. Mr. Emma states that he, along with three of his friends, were drinking in the Blackmore Bar located at 1 Chelsea Street, Charlestown. Mr. Emma further states that they were engaged in a verbal argument inside, which continued onto the sidewalk when both groups left the bar. The victim sustained a non-life-threatening stab wound to the left side and left elbow. Due to Mr. Emma's level of intoxication, he was unable to provide officers with a description. The officers also spoke to a witness identified as Owen Lahane, date of birth 9-17-2001, who states that the victim, Jace Emma, was stabbed by a white male, approximately six foot, wearing a green hooded sweatshirt. Mr. Lahane further states that he and the unidentified suspect spoke briefly in the bar, but does not know the suspect. A1 officers did locate a crime scene at 1 Chelsea Street, Detective Juba, the Alpha 811, responded to photos and also took custody of the victim's bloody clothing. Also responding was Sergeant Gallagher to further investigate a license premise violation. Also involved in the fight, Andrew Canto, date of birth 6-1-2002. Darrell Cohen, date of birth 2-2-2001. And Owen Lahane, date of birth 9-17-2001. The victim, along with the listed by participants, arrived at BMC by Uber. That is Officer Jones' report. 
Okay, and I'll be reading off a police report, which which I wrote on uh, Wednesday, June 2nd, 2021, signed Detective Gallagher, Detective Eddie Hernandez, assigned to the BPD licensed permit unit, responded to the Blackmore located at 1 Chelsea Street to speak to staff regarding to an assault and battery with dangerous weapon incident that had occurred on May 31st, 2021. Detective spoke to the person in charge, Mr. Jeff Feldman, who confirmed that he was aware of the incident. Detectives informed Mr. Feldman that the incident involved underage patrons in which the establishment did not call for a 911 response. Mr. Feldman stated to detectives that the A1 detectives had already contacted him and the establishment would be providing camera footage to the investigators. As a result of the incident, Sergeant Detective Gallagher issued license permits inspection notice 048023 for assault and battery with the dangerous weapon patron on patron outside of the premise. Persons under 21 drinking alcohol on premise and failure to call 911. Mr. Feldman signed for an accepted the notice. That's all. Thank you, Detective. Attorney Conway, would you like to address the Yes. Um, and if I if I may, this uh, Mr. Nahijan with me is with me. He was there present that night, and we've also conducted it in a pretty good investigation of what happened that <laughs> night. Um, as you've heard uh, pre from previous hearings today, this was right after the COVID was uh, lifted, and it, this was also the night of a Bruins playoff game where the licensee, as everybody else has been, was somewhat understaffed. We, Mr. Hinehija, did um, observe two groups of males. They were on either side of the restaurant. And then one uh, group approached another group that was closer to the door. They began jawing at each other. We don't believe it was a, a rose to the level of an argument. But at that time, management, Mr. Hinehija, they made the decision to shut both groups off, give them their check, and have them leave the premises. They did so without really giving us a problem. When, um, after they left, we decided to just, because of the, uh, the fact that we were short staffed, we decided to close and or close early that night and we began our close up procedure. That is when Mr. Nahijid was told by one of the employees says, hey, there's a, fight, there's a fight outside over to the right. Our employees went outside and at that point, the fight had stopped. There was some blood. We asked people if they were okay. They said they were okay. And then they gave all indications that they were going to, they were leaving the premises. We went and the employees went back inside. I think it's important for the board to know here that this is basically really, a, this is a restaurant. It doesn't have uh, any kind of nightclub life at all. It is serves mainly people from the Charlestown neighborhood, people from the office building that it's in, and a lot of tourists that are going through the Navy Yard. So it's more, it, it's more daytime heavy. And what we've done since this is that we have gone out and gotten brand new software for the um, for minors. Our, our people are now staffed that it used to be that it was the waiter or the waitress that was um, primarily responsible for checking IDs, but now all IDs have to be have to go through the software that the licensee has had. We have re-upped our uh, tips training. And we also um, have looked into security procedures. We never needed security before because as I said, it's basically just a restaurant. So we have um, upped, our, uh, upped our ID procedures. We have gone through, we're going through employee training and we don't expect that this will happen again. We're, we're, it, try, like, we're like everybody else, we're trying to in increase our staff but we are now acutely aware of what our obligations are, are especially, you know, especially with respect to the IDs and calling the police. We went through the employee training and we have told the employees, no matter what, they are to call the Boston police. And uh, Mr. Nahijan is here uh, it, it, to answer any questions you might have. Uh, especially with respect to the new policies and procedures that the licensee has put into place. Thank you very much. Uh, Chairwoman Joyce, do you have any questions? You said you're short staff. How many staff did you have on that night? Uh, we had 
five, I believe, three bartenders and two servers, and myself would be six. What was the capacity that night? Uh, capacity was around, I think at its highest was probably around 120 people. Okay. So the testimony was that they were jarring at each other. What does that mean? So they, they were two separate tables and throughout the night they had, you know, had one table had walked over to the other. And, and from my vantage point, it looked like at least someone from one party knew someone in the other party and, you know, just your normal, you know, uh, they were just, it, it didn't look malicious, put it that way. Um, you know, kind of just busting each other's chops, that sort of thing. Um, and then, you know, I, 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 I don't, I never saw really anything get heated, you know, anything that was malicious. Okay. Um, and forgive me if, if this was already part of the testimony as to the, um, underage patrons, were they, were they, um, did you do an ID check on them at all? Personally, I did not. Um, I, I am not sure if the, the server or the bartender did. Okay, so describe to me what your um, policy is with that. Well, anyone it should- 12.45 a.m. restaurant and serving, you know, a restaurant at 12.45 a.m., how are you determining whether or not you're serving people of age? Well, it, it, it wasn't quite that late because um, we had closed it at midnight. We did last call at about 11.15 that night. Um, well, I mean, what, what should happen is that, you know, the bartenders and servers should be checking anyone who's under the age of 35. I mean, that's just what it, what we had put into place. Um, one of the groups was um, a group that, you know, the, the bartenders knew. Um, I don't believe it's the people that were the victims in this. Um, it was, you know, a couple of the other people that they knew. Um, but there was definitely a lack of, of checking IDs or they checked the IDs and thought that they were, um, that they were true and real IDs. Well, would you address though, what the new procedures are that we had the new software that we have and, and what the employees are being instructed to do? Yeah. So, Ed, so everyone now is, is instructed that if, if the person looks, if they get an ID and looks you know, under the age of 35, they take the ID, we have an iPad, um, it scans the barcode on the back, uh, and it tells you whether the ID is real and legit and over 21, it tells you if the ID is real and under 21, and it tells you if the ID is fake. Um, so we've implemented that into our, um, you know, for all our servers and bartenders, showed them all how to do it. Really what we want them to do is bring it to myself or another manager and we will do it for them. Um, but obviously if, if we're not, you know, if we're busy doing other things, we've taught them how to use the actual, um, you know, procedure. It's actually pretty simple. Okay, no other questions. Commissioner Saxon or Commissioner Curran. Hey, Dobbs, thank you. Can you describe for me um, on a Saturday night hosting um, a full capacity Bruins playoff game, what would your ideal staffing have been? Well, we would have had uh, probably four bartenders. Let's see, one, two, maybe four servers, a food runner, uh, and then maybe a manager or maybe two managers. Anyone designated it as any type of uh, security? No, we, we don't. The only night, the only day that we would ever implement something like that would have been St. Patrick's Day, um, but not usually, um, you know, for Bruins or Celtics games or something like that. We, we don't usually because, you know, our, our, you know the, the crowd that comes in there, the average age is probably, you know, 30 to 50, 30 to 65. So it's never really, um, you know, we have some younger people that come in, but uh, it's never been a place that that I guess is, you know, in my opinion, has really needed, you know, a doorman. We've never been, you know, so busy and so, you know, you know, I don't know what the right word is, but, um, you know, we've never really needed one, or at least I think the thought was that we didn't need one. 
I, I will state for the board that we've looked into and we're, because we weren't able to, we didn't have security footage outside that we are also upping up all of the security cameras that are on the premises so that the outside will be covered. The, the outside of where the, we, we butt up against the uh, office building. Thank you very as, much. As I said, it's mostly, it was just a restaurant. And uh, so we're, we're looking to, to uh, become more sophisticated and everything. Thank you very much. The board will take this under advisement. Thank you. Thank you. Calling 142 Berkeley LLC, doing business as Citrus and Salt, located at 142 Berkeley Street. The date of the incident was June 5th, 2021. Person under 21 in possession of alcohol on premise in violation of Mass General Law, Chapter 138, Section uh, 34. Who is present on behalf of the licensee? Could you please state your name? We cannot hear you. I can see your label, but I can't hear you. Can you hear me? We can, we can hear you. It's a little quiet. Um, my name is Kelly McNally. Thank you. And who will be testifying on behalf of the Boston Police Department? I will be. Detective Fernandez. And are there any other individuals with personal knowledge of the alleged incident who wish to testify? Sergeant Detective William Gallagher, if need be. Thank you, Sergeant. Could all parties please raise your right hand? Do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. I do. Thank you. Uh, Detective, you can proceed with the police report. Good morning. I'm reading from a police report, which I wrote on uh, Saturday, June 5th, 2021. Sorry, Detective William Gallagher, Detective Eddie Hernandez, signed to the BPD license premise unit, conducted a license and premise inspection of citrus and salt located at 142 Berkeley Street in Boston. As detectives walked to the restaurant, they observed a table of four female patrons, one of which was later identified as Virginia Royston, drinking alcoholic drinks. Detective, detectives noted that these patrons appeared young, and detectives asked them to produce identification to confirm their ages. Three other patrons stated they were over 21 years of age. Detectives confirmed that the three females were over 21 years of age. The fourth patron, Ms. Royston, stated she was over 21 years of age. Ms. Royston then produced a fraudulent Pennsylvania driver's license that contained her correct name, but displayed a date of birth, which made it appear as though she was over 21 years of age. Detectives used a license verification program, which confirmed that the driver's license was indeed fraudulent. The fraudulent driver's license was confiscated by detectives. Ms. Royston will be someone to call for a person under 21 possession of alcohol and possession of fraudulent identification. Detectives brought this to the attention of the person in charge, Ms. Kelly McNally. As a result, what detectives observed, Sergeant Detective Gallagher issued license premise inspection notice 003788, a person under 21 possession of alcohol on premise. Ms. McNally signed for and accepted the notice as well. Thank you, Detective. Sergeant, did you have anything to add? No, ma'am. Thank you. Ms. McNally, would you like to address the alleged incident? Please. Um, so since the incident, we have, um, we have done training with our staff um, we do weekly ID training um, during our pre-meals and we also um, have security now at the doors and we don't, and, and on um, busy nights and we don't allow um, people who are 21 after 9 p.m. Thank you very much. Uh, Chairwoman Joyce, do you have any questions for the licensee? Uh, just want to make sure I caught that. You retrained your staff, you now have security at the door and you don't allow people under 21 after 9 p.m.? Yes, that's correct. Um, so, and what happened this night? Were they ID'd at all? They were ID'd, yes. They were sat at a table for dinner and um, they were all ID'd. One of them presented a fake ID, which we did not know at the time. Obviously, it was a, it was a good fake ID um, and she was served. I don't have any other questions. Commissioner Saxon, Commissioner Curran. That's okay, thank you. All right, seeing no questions, the board will take this under advisement. Thank you. 
calling Calejas Inc. doing business as La Hacienda located at 144 to 150 Meridian Street. The date of the incident was June 8, 2021. Assault and battery patron on patron in front of premise in violation of Mass General Law, Chapter 138, Section 64, Chapter 265, Section 13A. Failure to call 911 in violation of Mass General Law, Chapter 138, Section 64 in Ford's Rule 1.14B. Who is present on behalf of the licensee? Um, I am Aldo Callejas. Thank you, Mr. Callejas. Who is going to be testifying on behalf of the Boston Police Department? I will be. Detective Hernandez. And are there any other individuals with personal knowledge of the alleged incident who wish to testify? Sergeant Detective Gallagher, if need be. Thank you, Sergeant. Please raise your right hand. Do you swear to tell the whole truth and nothing but the truth? I do. Please proceed with the police report, Detective. Good morning. Once again, I'll be reading from a police report, which I wrote on uh, Tuesday, June 8th. Uh, 2021, Sergeant Detective William Gallon and Detective Eddie Hernandez assigned to the BPD Elections Permit Unit responded to La Hacienda located at 150 Meridian Street in Boston to speak to staff regarding an incident that occurred on June 6, 2021. <clears throat> Detective spoke to uh, Manager Miguel Cajas, who stated that he was made aware of an altercation that occurred in front of the establishment. Detectives explained to Mr. Cajas that they had received a surveillance video that showed what appeared to be patrons exiting their restaurant fighting on the sidewalk in front of their premise. The video also shows what appeared to be staff not intervening to separate the parties. Detectives confirmed through the police dispatch system that no calls for 911 were placed by any restaurant staff. As a result of what the detectives became aware of, Sergeant Detective Gallagher issued license to premise in section notice 003790 for A and B patron on patron in front of premise and to fail to call 911. Mr. Gay has signed for and accepted the notice. As a... Thank you, Sergeant. Did you have anything to add? Uh, just that the uh, the person that sent us these videos, uh, she, she calls frequently on noise issues and patrons loitering out front at uh, closing hour. So it's our intention that the staff should do a better job moving them along and monitoring the front of the premise where this incident took place. That's it. Thank you, Mr. Clayhouse. Would you like to address the alleged incident? Um. Yes. Um. So. What happened that night was it was a birthday. Um, all parties that were involved were it, uh, sitting at the same table, celebrating a birthday. Nothing out of the ordinary. Uh, once the tab came at the end of the night, um, they were arguing, but nothing too intense. They walked out and they just started fighting. Uh, my staff did intervene. It was my security guard. It's uh, the tall guy. Everyone else was about under five foot five. Um, it ended pretty quickly. Everyone separated. I didn't call the police because, uh, it ended. And then also state police was right there at the end. It doesn't come up on the video because, um, the video that they sent in was sent in by my neighbor who is always, uh, pretty intense. And I don't know. I mean, we, we don't make any noise. We have security outside pushing people along. We have security seven days a week. And I mean, nothing, nothing out of the ordinary. There was no one, no one hurt. The bill was paid. So we really didn't have any reason to believe that there was going to be a fight because the bill, uh, they were at the same table, same party. The tab was paid. That's it. Thank you. Chairwoman Joyce. Yes, thank you. Um, so I want to get out the disbursement at Closing, um, and I want you to describe for the board today your policy about how you disperse victims, uh, not victims, how you disperse patrons in front of your licensed premise at the end of the night, because that's what I think one of the issues is here. Okay. Um, the way we do it is that we do last call at 115, even though we do have the license till 2 a.m., but so that because you, uh, my neighbor was complaining, we started doing it at 115, so that way we don't get one huge crowd dispersing at the same, uh, coming out at the same time at the end of the night. So we do that. Also, we leave the security guard outside, pushing people along. Um, most of the people are waiting for an Uber. Also, there's a bus stop right in front of the restaurant. Um, what do you call it? Um, we do less call at 115 and we just have the security dispersing. We have, we turn the lights on at 115. We turn the music, the jukebox off at 115 and the TVs as well. Um, 
We disperse people as best as we can. Um, we the, the detectives come in and check up on us all the time because of my neighbor. And every time they've come, they haven't found any violations. Um, we do the best that we can. We're a small, well, we're, we're a family-owned restaurant, and we we follow the rules that we set up for the one fifteen a.m. last call. Okay, thank you. No other questions for me, Commissioner Saxon or Commissioner Curran. No questions. Thank you. Can you tell me a little more about the state police that night? Uh, they showed up at the end uh, once they were parting ways. They were at the end of the they were at the end of the street since the uh, uh, the state the state police barracks are right across. The police officer came in, asked me if everything was all right. I'm like, yeah, they were leaving. They got in a little bit of a, a fight, and then they just dispersed. It wasn't um, didn't last too long. I mean, now I know though that any incident whatsoever, I should be calling 911, no matter how small. Thank you very much. The board will take this matter under advisement. Thank you. Calling Zari Enterprises Inc. doing business as O'Brien's Liquors located at 1911 to 1913 Dorchester Avenue. The date of the incident was June 16th, 2021. Alcohol consumption by patrons on public way in front of premise liquor store in violation of Mass General Law Chapter 138, Section 64. Who is present on behalf of the licensee? Is there anyone present on behalf of O'Brien's Liquors? All right, we will take a second call. Calling the next place LLC doing business as the greatest bar located at 262 to 266 Friends Street. The date of the incident was June 6, 2021. Overcrowding on third floor, 255 mechanical count, capacity 140 in violation of Mass General Law, Chapter 138, Section 64 in Board's Rules 1.03J, 1.06A and F. Who is present on behalf of the licensee? Good morning, Commissioner. This is Attorney Kurt Bletzer for the next place, LLC. And who is with you, Attorney Bletzer, for the licensee? Uh, Joe Von Beal was uh had some difficulties he had a problem at home he was with me but he uh he had to leave so i'll be uh handling this myself he's a security staff and we'll be testifying on behalf of the boston police department sergeant detective william gallagher and are there any other individuals with personal knowledge of the alleged incident who wish to testify Detective hernandez if needed thank you detective please raise your right hand do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. Thank you. Please proceed with the police report. Good morning, Sergeant Tech People. I'm Gallagher from the Boston Police. I'll be reading a report that I wrote on 6-6-2021 at 12-26 a.m. Sergeant Tech William Gallagher and Detective Eddie Hernandez of the licensed premise unit conducted a licensed premise inspection of the greatest fire at 262 Friend Street. Inside the premises, detectives met the manager, Jovan Beal, who escorted them throughout the bar. On the third floor, detectives observed it to be quite crowded. Detectives inquired as to the capacity of the floor and were informed 140. Thinking that the number of patrons on the third floor was in excess of the posted capacity, Sergeant Detective Gallagher conducted a mechanical count, which resulted in 255 patrons being counted. Detectives immediately informed Mr. Beal of their findings. Mr. Beal stated that he had two employees call out that night and he was short staffed. Mr. Beal then placed adequate security to the uh, door on the third floor. As a result of what detectives had observed, Sergeant Gallagher issued a license premise inspection notice number 003789 to the greatest bar. For overcrowding on third floor, 255 found a mechanical account capacity set at 140. Mr. Beal signed for and accepted the notice. Those are the facts. Thank you. Detective Hernandez, did you have anything to add? Sorry, no, uh, no ma'am. Thank you. Attorney Bletzer, do you want to address the alleged incident? Please, thank you. 
Sergeant Detective Gallagher, the staff was helpful and cooperative that night when you were there? Yes, sir, they were. And there were no, no other issues with the establishment? No other issues. Uh, if I may, the, uh, the night in question, we did have a uh, private party that was up on the third floor. At that time, there was some events in the neighborhood that had gotten out, so it was kind of a perfect storm for us where folks were coming in, heading up the stairs, and as the uh, private party was, was getting out, so it got a little bit overcrowded, obviously overcrowded at that time. We were understaffed because folks had called in, and at the beginning, back in May and June, everybody was having some difficulty with, uh, obviously, with getting folks back to work. We have resolved that issue on on any given night when there are any events there. We obviously have, we always have enough staff there. This particular night, two folks had called in. Uh, we have been able to resolve that. We have our folks back and have hired more more security staff to deal with any issues. We do put security on each floor to deal with all of the different areas that are in the establishment. So we have taken steps to uh, to correct that problem so that it won't. There won't be an issue and we're able to control uh, where the folks go so that we can make sure we have the proper proper uh, counts on each of our floors because all of the floors have different numbers uh, pursuant to the licensing. Thank you. Chairwoman Joyce. Thank you. Um, how short staffed were they this night? Uh, we actually had six, six people on. Um, we would normally have eight to 10 uh, on, on the busy nights. Uh, two, there'd be two, two uh, security staff on each floor, you know, along with the bartenders and the wait staff, but, but particular security staff, we would have two at the front door and then two on each floor so that we would be properly staffed to make sure that we have the proper counts and numbers throughout the building. Okay. Um, I don't have any other questions at this moment. Commissioner Curran and Commissioner Saxon, do you? Thank you. Nothing for me. Thank you. Thank you. The board will take this matter under advisement. Calling Newberry Fine Dining Limited Partnership, doing business as Sansi, located at 327 Newberry Street. The date of the incident is June 11th, 2021. Persons under 21 in possession of alcohol on premise in violation of Mass General Law, Chapter 138, Sections 34A, 34C, 64 to 64A. Who is present on behalf of the Good morning licensee? again, Secretary Delaney Hawkins, Dennis Quilty, attorney representing the uh, licensee. With us again, Matt Casey, who's the Director of Operations, and Bruna Meister, who is the manager on duty on the right in question. And I see both of them are with us. Good morning. Thank you. And who will be testifying on behalf of the Boston Absolutely. Police Department? Detective Fernandez. And are there any other individuals with personal knowledge of the alleged incident who wish to testify regarding this matter? Sergeant Detective Gallagher, if need be. Thank you. If all parties could please raise your right hand. Do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and I nothing do, but the truth? I do. Thank you. Uh, please proceed with the police report. Good morning. I'm going to bring a from a police report which I wrote on um, Friday, June 11, 2021, Sergeant Detective William Gallagher and Detective Eddie Hernandez assigned to the BPD License Permits Unit conducted a license and permit inspection of Sansi located at 327 Newbury Street in Boston. While inside the establishment, detectives observed five patrons later identified as Daniel <coughs> Irolov, Rachel <coughs> Jones, Brian Robalos, Ian Brooks, and Lillian Hempel drinking beers and mixed alcoholic drinks. Detectives noticed that these patrons appeared drunk, and detectives asked them to produce identification to confirm their ages. Patrons immediately stated they were under 21 years of age. One of the patrons, Ms. Hempel, produced a fraudulent Massachusetts driver's license that contained her correct name but displayed date of birth, which made it appear as though she was over 21 years of age. Detectives used a license verification program, which confirmed that the driver's license was indeed fraudulent. The fraudulent driver's license was confiscated by detectives. All five patrons will be summoned at the court for persons under 21 in possession of alcohol. Ms. Hem Ms. Hempel will also be summoned at the court for possession of fraudulent identification. It should be noted that server Andy Na Na Naranjo was eating at the same table and stated that he did not ask the patrons for identification. Ms. Naranjo will be summoned at the court for procuring alcohol persons uh, under 21 years of age. 
Detectives brought this to the attention of the person in charge, Ms. Bruna Meister. As a result of what detectives observed, signed Detective Gallagher issued license permit inspection notice 003799. Persons under 21 possession of alcohol on premise, Ms. Meister signed for and accepted the notice. Thank you, Detective. Sergeant, did you have anything to add? Uh, yes, ma'am. Uh, it's our intention this night that the uh, the server and the uh, patrons did know each other, and that's why they were probably invited into the restaurant and not not asked for ID. Uh, as Detective Menendez noted, we're going to summons the server in. I did speak uh, speak to Miss Bruna Meister, and she stated that she was going to fire the server that evening. Thank you very well, much, Attorney Kilty. <clears throat> Yes, thank you, ma'am. Thank you, uh, Detective uh, Sergeant Detective Gallagher and Detective Fernandez. So you you felt this was somewhat unusual that the server was sitting at the table with them. I would assume. Yeah. Yes. We don't see it all the time. Um, yeah. He uh, he had only been hired a few days before. Uh, interestingly, as Ms. Meister will will testify, they they literally did a training that day about ID checking for all the staff because you know places were just beginning to open up. I, I really think this is basically kind of an inside hack job. This guy just invited these people in and had no intention of asking anyone for IDs and I think was just offering his friends a good time for the night. Um, and he basically pulled the wool over everybody's eyes in the place. He was fired immediately. Um, they have uh, reinstated all of their training protocols. Um, Mr. Casey can speak to that as the director of operations for the Lions Group Management and Ms. Meister who conducted those uh, meetings, including again, that day before this happened, uh, would be able to testify to that as well. Again, we just feel as though this guy took advantage of his position and kind of walked these people in and literally, as you heard, was sitting there eating with them. It's like, I, you know, very strange, obviously, and he was immediately let go. I think the board knows that, you know, Sansi has been on Newbury Street for many, many, many years as a uh, first class dining establishment uh, has, I can't even remember the last time we were in front of the board for a violation of any kind, um, but they certainly are not the kind of establishment that allows this kind of activity to take place and it certainly would never happen again. And I'm sure, um, Mr. Um, where are you, Matt Casey? Uh, do you have anything further to add, or Ms. Meister? Uh, I I just want to confirm what you said. We think it was an inside job. We, uh, in fact, that week had a manager uh, a manager's meeting on the Thursday prior to discuss uh, proper IDing with the staff. Uh, they were making, uh, our management team there was making that a priority at pre-shift meetings uh, for the days that followed and still do. Um, we've reinstated tips training for the entire staff. Um, uh, as you said, we certainly try to do our best to make sure everybody is properly ID'd and, uh, and we serve only patrons over 21. We don't really have problems there with that. This seems to have been uh, an isolated incident. Ms. Meister, did you inter inter did you interface with the uh, detectives on the night in question? Yes, I was there. I was the manager on duty that that night, and I just confirmed everything. Um, everything was going perfect at the night, of course. Uh, and we do trainings here. We do every day a shift meeting with all the staff. Specifically that day, I have the notes for the day um, that I did. The meeting with my staff and we train people here and everybody and the server was working here for just a couple few days and he was immediately terminated after that thank you ma'am the board members may have some questions i don't have any questions commissioners do you have any questions um how was he able to sit there without being noticed how many other staff people were in the uh, the establishment at the time Yes, um, I was in the bathroom at this time. And then when I came back, I saw the cops and I went to talk to them. Um, I didn't see it when I saw he was already talking to the cops, but I was told by them that he sat on the table and he was eating with them because he knew them. 
Thank you very much. The board will take this matter under advisement. Thank you. Thank you. We will return uh, for second call to item 11, calling Zari Enterprises Inc. doing business as O'Brien's Liquors, located at 1911 to 1913 Dorchester Avenue. The date of the incident is June 16th, 2021. Alcohol consumption by patrons on public way in front of premise liquor store in violation of Mass General Law, Chapter 138, Section 64. Is the licensee present? Oh, Mr. Zafar, I believe you are muted. Could you unmute yourself, please? Nope, sir, you are muted. We cannot hear you. Okay, do you hear me now? Yes, please state your name for the record. I'm Paul Uzzai. I'm day one from here because the first time I'm Zoom meeting, I'm Paul Uzzai because I don't know what's... My name is MD Abu Zafar and I'm the manager from Jory Enterprise. Great, thank you. And who will be testifying on behalf of the Boston Police Department? Sergeant Detective William Gallagher. Are there any other individuals with personal knowledge of the alleged incident who wish to testify regarding this matter? Detective Hernandez if needed. Thank you, Detective. Please raise your right hands. Do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. I do. I do. Thank you. Uh, Sergeant, please proceed with the police report. Yes. Good morning again, Sergeant Detective William Gallagher, Boston Police. I'll be reading the uh, Boston Police incident report that I wrote on 6 16 2021 at 10 10 p.m. Sergeant Detective William Gallagher and Detective Eddie Hernandez assigned to license premise unit were driving down Dorchester Ave near Ashmont Station when they observed eight people drinking from bottles of Corona beer. Detectives observed these eight people to be standing 15 to 20 feet from the front stairs of O'Brien's Liquor Store located at 1911 Dorchester Avenue. Detectives have received numerous neighborhood complaints regarding public drinking on the section of Dorchester Avenue across from the MBTA station abutting O'Brien's. Detectives have spoken to staff about the need to monitor the front of their liquor store for public drinkers. Detectives called off with BPD operations that they were going to conduct the Code 35 at O'Brien's and requested a marked unit to assist in moving the group along. The Harry 411 PO Patrick Welter responded. Officers utilized their blue lights to move the group along after picking up their mess. Numerous Corona bottles and an empty bottle of Johnny Walker were observed on the public sidewalk. Inside the liquor store, detectives spoke with the person in charge, Rikab Amasa, reiterating the importance of monitoring the front of the premise. As a result, the detectives had observed Sergeant Gallagher issued a license premise inspection notice number 022855 to O'Brien's for alcohol consumption by patrons on public way in front of premise. Mr. Massa signed for and accepted the notice. Those are the facts from that evening. Thank you. Detective Hernandez, did you have anything to add? All right. Um, Mr. Zafar, would you like to address um, the alleged incident? Yes, I, this has happened not only one time, this happened day one like that. Before, like a few, few months ago, I talked to the greater Esmont, the Boston, um, Esmont Street, their business development. I try to problem there. I keep calling for that always, always, always. If I not, if I not move it, they not want to move, stay there. And right, if I say move it, they tell me all bad word to me, bad word, me, my employee, every single day. I keep calling. It's not that happened. I try to contract to the police officer. How can I solve the problem? They advise me, put the more sign. I already have a two sign, no lettering in one front. They told me more sign and keep calling the police. I say more I do. And not only that, they, as soon as I call them, please move from there. You cannot buy. We not even not sell it. Even we not sell that. We not sell it. Then you know, lot up. What I am from? How can I do the business? All kind of bad word I cannot say in the board, but I'm whatever I'm trying to do. I try to put more sign and keep calling as soon. Already you see my record. How many time every day I call for that, and it is I need your. I need some kind of help. Sometimes I'm helpless. When the people came here, 
if I tell them, they not move. Also, they tell me a lot of bad word. I'm immigrant. I'm, I cannot say what's kind of bad word with my mom or my dad. Why you came here? He take my business. But it is because I'm here 30 years, this country. Sometimes I feel very bad myself. I tell them, listen, why you tell me like that? Why not do work and make more money than because I'm immigrant? Yes, I respect that. And this is the way I can do. Please help them and advise. Already I told my as soon as they call the police, I already call the police every almost every day. They tell me. He told me only way as soon as I see the people, call them. I did the same way. And I have been, and this is not problem only, it's problem here. I've been, I mean, here 11 years. This right few months is more because used to they do in the small station, the police take the small, nobody can sit down in the in front of the station. Then sometimes they come in front of me, sometimes come in front of the pizza store, sometimes they do the Dunkin' Donuts. It's not our problem. It should be all our problem need to be fixed. But I don't know how I can fix that. But I try whatever foolish advised me to do so. Thank you so much for listening to me. Thank you. Chairwoman Joyce. Thank you. Mr. Zafar, this is a very serious problem. Yes. Um, how many staff do you have on at a given on a given shift? Three. Uh, th three on the Monday to Monday to Wednesday, and Friday, uh, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, four, and one on the floor. All together, five. So you have five um, staff members. Can you describe what their roles are? Someone's behind the. So someone's on the three, cashier. I have a three register behind them, and one is the do the floor, and other usually also the. Only problem is they are, if they go outside and they tell them, move it, they react a different way. I have a video I already give to the police. To Are any of your staff assigned to the door to encourage the patrons to move along? Yes, we have a, we have a sign there. No lettering. No, any, not a sign, but are any of your staff members, is there an assignment to stand at the front door and tell people to move along? This is your responsibility as a licensee. So you'll have um, to rethink yeah. your rethink your staffing. My um, other question for you not, is what please, percentage please. what percentage of your sales um, are nips and singles? This is almost thirty five percent. Yeah. And how long have you been operating this? Eleven years. Eleven years. Yes. So signs on the doors are not enough. I'm assuming you know your customers very well, that they're repeat customers that come in. Yes. Whatever I'm trying to ask soon, I see the same people, they not go home, we not sell the alcohol to them. I told them and uh, sign is door. No, it does not help. It is true. Yes. Yeah, the signs are not enough. Um, it's also not the responsibility of Boston police to do this for you all the time. You're going to have to really put some thought into rethinking your security and operations plan because I don't think you have the right tools in place to make changes that are necessary to prevent the people drinking outside. Um, you're going to have to rethink that. And um, I think the board's going to look for more information from you other than just signs on the doors. Uh, Please. I know you need help. Any, well, I'm any, glad. Any, I'm advice, glad you're... any advice? I really, I love to do it. I love to see that because in front of the business like that, I lose the business. The people cannot come the inside if somebody no. hang around. Not only one a day. Lot, a lot of people would not want to go inside if there's eight to ten people it, drinking. My business. The it's problem, also a dangerous situation. Yes, um, problem. it's a public. It's a public safety problem. It's a nuisance. And it's um, a burden on the police resources in this neighborhood. So you're yeah. going to have to really put some thought into this. If you have five employees on, I've been in your license premise, it's not that big. Um, no. You're going to have to have somebody at the door who tells people that they have to move along. May I, ask, may, 
May I ask one question? The problem is that if I do, to try to hit them. If you go outside, just tell me, come here, come here, come here. That's the people like that. They, that's why my scared, my employees scared them to go outside. They do, I, everybody say, don't go too much. If there's anything happen, if you hit them or something happen, then I have more problem. That's the, I already explained to the police. The, the problem, always they tell me, come here, come here, come here, come outside. If they not sell the, sell the thing, they told me, first thing told me, I'm 21 years old. Why not sell? I say, you're gonna, no, I'm not to stay there. I say, you, I, we saw them always, you stay there. We cannot sell the liquor anymore. Then they start. Okay, if you not start, come outside. You're gonna see it tonight. Every day threatening, every single day. But I already explained everything to the police report. You can see that how many times I call the police. Have, uh, you, have you considered private security? Yeah, we have it. We have a security. I have a security, not only one. I have a 24 camera all over the place. No, not a security camera, an, an actual oh. hired oh. A security firm. Uh, yes, that's one. Maybe that's the only one. Is I really appreciate that. Maybe we that's going to help. That's exactly right. And, Please, and, to, and to Commissioner I, Saxon's point, um, the responsibility is on you. So you might have to pay out of pocket for a security guard. You can't rely on Boston police. It's not their duty to monitor your patrons. If you're doing 35% of your sales on nips and singles, perhaps some of that money can be used towards security. Suggestion. Um, this can't continue. This can't continue outside your license premise. It's not enough to say that you put signs up and you're asking people not to come. I understand it's a difficult situation that you feel that you feel as if your patrons are threatening you if you don't sell to them, but th those are not the answers to the, the problems that outside your license premise. So, Commissioner Carr, do you have any questions? Any advice? I really appreciate. I respect that. I want to do it. Uh, Mr. Zafar, how, yes, many, how many patrons or people are you currently not selling to? due to their uh, refusal to move along when you've asked them to? As long as I know the people, this, they not go, they're all around there. How, how many are you currently excluded from selling to? At least five to six people. So five to six people. And, and how is this noted in your business to all your employees? Uh, they know every day they came here, they buy and they go there outside. And if I not sell is they go there, um, the couple you know, couple block down there is called Waste Laker. They go there, they buy. I'm sorry, repeat that? If I not sell it, then they talk to all kind of bad and then go there, Waste Laker. You know, that was the street from the, it's, uh, I don't know the address. It's in, I think, uh, 8, 17, 20, Waste in Dorchester Air. There another liquor store down there. Okay. Um when so you've described the incidents where someone's come in and and you've said that you've told them that they can't buy because that you know that they've refused to move on when you've asked them to and yes. they threatened you right yes have you reported those as threats to the police i did we did okay do you have do you have an like do you have a date when that ha occurred it's the last three days ago i called the police and you called the police. And what, what did you report to the police? That you had people they, up front or that someone no, in your store threatening you? No, they in front of my in front of my store. The same thing happened in front of the hangar on and drinking. So in front of do, you, do you have a day where you've called the police and said, I, I have a, a customer who's threatening me? Not, not three days ago. Yes, we did. And when was that? A couple of weeks ago. OK. And you know, with regard, regard to this day, this eight people on this day, um, were, were these eight people confronted on this day? That day, not the, my, my employee did not call. I'm sorry? No, my employee that did not call that day. You didn't call. Did, did any of your employees on this day, with spe specifically to this incident at this time, did anyone go outside and ask them to move along? I don't think so, no. Thank you. I appreciate this. Are there any other questions? Seeing none, the board will take this matter under advisement. Those are all the items before the board today. Thank you all very much. Be sure.
Thanks. Thank you.